Hi, this is Mike Fauché. Today I want to go over the QNAP QMAGI photo application and demonstrate the facial recognition features that are built into the app. I also want to cover the Coral TPU, Google's edge computing module that greatly speeds up the facial recognition and image detection process. If you want to see how this can simplify cataloging your photos, then stick around for the rest of this video. And of course, if you haven't done so, please subscribe and smash that notifications icon so you'll be notified of any future content. Before we get into the demo, let's first talk about what QMagi is and why you'd want to use it over PhotoStation, which is also a QNAP application. There's a lot of similarities between the two programs, but the main difference is that QMagi uses artificial intelligence to perform facial recognition, subject identification, and event detection of your photos, which can really simplify and speed up how you catalog your photos. Think of it as Google Photos on your NAS. Let's take a quick walk through the installation and how to set this up, then we'll go through the interface and see how easy it is to catalog your photos. So let's walk through the installation real quick. This is basically a three-part install. The first application you're going to need to have installed is a multimedia console. Now by default, most of the time this is already installed. So the reason we want to use this is basically this is the application that controls all of the folders that we're considering to be multimedia and what folders are going to be indexed. So if we quickly go through this, this shows you the applications that are being supported currently. And this gives you the indexing status as well as allowing us to change the priority. So we're going to go ahead and switch this to normal for now. And the reason we're going to do that is just to do some speed testing to see how long this process takes and compare it to the Google Edge computing module. And then this is an overall status of our thumbnail generation. This gives us the chance to remove all the thumbnails, regenerate, um, etc. A few settings. Also image quality settings, which is can, can be important depending on what you're displaying this on. So there currently is no transcoding taking place because we're not doing anything. These are the applications that it will support. This is the AI engine. And the reason this is on yours probably won't see this. Um, until you actually install QMagi, um, which you'll install an application called, if we look here, mine's already installed, it's called the QNAP AI Core. And that's what actually does the image recognition and facial recognition. Now this is not on by default and it will be installed when we install QMagi. So let's go ahead and do that right now. I'm gonna pick the location of my second volume. And then we'll let it go through the install. It takes a few minutes. Now, if you're installing the, uh, if it's installing the core, the AI core at the same time, it the installation is a little bit on the long side, so it may take you know five six minutes or so to install. So just be patient. If you're just installing QMagi, it's pretty quick. So now that we have all the applications installed, like Multimedia Console, we have the QMagi program itself, and of course the QNAP AI core. Now let's go ahead and walk through a quick overview and then we'll start tagging some files and see what happens. So the first thing um, that we're going to want to do is I just want to walk you through starting from the back. Here's the QMagi program itself. When we open it, we, we find nothing in it because there are no photos, there are no albums, there are no folders, there's nothing in here because we haven't actually configured any of the watch folders. So as we go look through, click on through all of these, there's really nothing there. First thing we need to do is go into the multimedia console and we're going to go into content management and we can now see that QMagi is is actually listed here and we're going to go ahead and click edit and add some folders. Now I created a test folder that's got a bunch of photos in there that we'll use as my benchmark. I'm going to click on test photos, hit apply. I want to make sure that indexing is set to normal and if we look at the AI engines it's beginning to index and recognize these photos. So this is going to take quite some time to do, uh, especially without the TPU. So I'm going to let this run through and we'll see how long it actually takes to get done. So if we pop over to the AI engine under the multimedia console, we can see some status that's currently taking place. This is the area that actually benefits the most from using the Coral TPU. And we'll demonstrate that here um, once we get completed with this initial recognition. And we'll get a feel for how long this is going to take, and then we'll be able to compare it to the Coral TPU. So if I click on the background test, I can see kind of currently where I'm at. And it still has over 12,288 files left to go. 
it's still um, recognizing similar photos. I still has 122 to go, recognizing objects 228, and recognizing people 173. So it's got a, quite a ways to go before we see any progress here. So I'm going to basically stop the recording, let this finish, and then we'll kind of benchmark and measure how long the entire process took. And then we can basically reset everything from scratch, delete everything, and regenerate the whole process using the TPU just to have an apples-to-apples -apples comparison using the same folders and the same device. So now that we've finished our first recognition process, let's look over the QMAG application itself and see how it identified people as well as cover some of its features. When I first saw this, I thought it missed quite a bit, but as it turns out, it actually did an amazing job. So if I look over here at the left menu, we can see that we have albums. And under those albums, it's detected some key things such as people, things, tags, places, events. It's attempted to categorize those. So if we take a look at people real quick, uh, we can kind of see that it's found hundreds of people. But when I first looked at this, I thought, wow, this is, seems to be spreading things out and breaking things up quite a bit. But then as you drill down, for example, as I look through this, I realized that when I look at my daughter's pictures, that it's broken down over multiple years, um, multiple events. It's, if I scroll all the way down to the bottom here, it's picked up events that have taken place many years ago and it was able to detect her properly. And I thought that was pretty amazing given the range of years here. And if I look at the top here, it says it's found some um, photos that may actually contain this person. Do you want to review these? So if I click on review, it actually looks and detects even further into the photo chain. So I'm going to go ahead and click on same. It's actually merging these pictures. So when, you, when it's all said and done, it really does an amazing job at detecting all these images. Um, far better than I anticipated. And it actually will even detect pictures that are where the person that's highlighted in the picture is basically in the background with a, just a really small picture to, to be detected. So it actually does it a pretty amazing job. And then basically the same same applies to, you know, places, things, things that, that were actually identified or tagged in some way or geo, geo tagged in some way. And those I could kind of understand. What was amazing to me, though, is actually the photo recognition or the image recognition. It'll actually also detect videos, so you can actually thumbnail your videos, too. Going through the menus, you have um, all of your photos. You have, you have your smart albums, your entire photo range. Um, and you have folders and then mobile app shows you anything that's been uploaded through the mobile application and then of course anything that you want to share. Going through the top, let's just pick a few of these photos here. We're going through the top here. You have the option of selecting any of the images and of course you can flip through and thumbnail through all of these and you can delete you can do whatever you need to do as far as photo management, all the basics. Over on the right-hand side here, you've got your timeline that starts from current day and then drops all the way to the beginning of your photos. Um, up here, you have the, you have a few things such as settings. So if you look at settings, you can change the content sources. You can back up and restore. And then this also tells you the status of what's happening with the AI core. And right now it's obviously enabled. The TPU is stopped because it's, it, there's nothing to recognize and it's finished facial, facial rec recognition. So overall, this thing is really actually much better than I thought. I, I kind of wasn't sure what I was going to expect when I actually decided to experiment with those, but it turned out to be far more useful than I thought it would be. If you're the kind of person that likes to store their images on your device or on your NAS, um, especially if you take a lot of pictures, this program may just be for you. So we'll also take a look at the mobile app. I did a quick overview of the mobile app using my iPad just to give you an idea of what it does it's basically a split an image of this but let's go through it real quick so you can kind of see what what it looks like so when you launch the app you basically get the same default screen that you do when you launch the application uh, from your web browser um, it does give you the option to upload um, videos and photos instantly from your device to the nas unit 
And then you can obviously just scroll up and down and see the images the same way you would see on your browser. All the same basic menus that are on the web browser are also on the iPad app or the iPhone app. They're just laid out a little differently. So you basically can retain all of your functionality. Now there's one caveat with this. If you're using the mobile app, you'll need to arrange for some way to connect to your device. And if you've seen any of my security videos in the past, you know that I'm not a big fan of the um, QNAP Cloud. So there's a couple different options that you can use for this. One is obviously OpenVPN. Um, and then soon I'll be doing a video on connecting your uh, NAS device or QNAP device to your system using Tailscale. For now, you're basically limited to either VPN or local access. So that's about it for the um, application itself. The last thing I want to talk about is the TPU, which is the Coral, basically the Google Tensor Processing Unit. And it's a um, Google designed device marketed by Coral. It's designed to work with your NAS unit and other devices as well. It's not limited to your QNAP unit, but QNAP does have direct support for the device. As you can see, it's a really small device, uh, basically just a standard USB-C on one side and a USB-A cable on the other side. Externally, there's really not that much to this. After you plug the device in, there's not much to it. You can verify under hardware resources that the TPU is actually installed. And then you can go ahead and set TPU priority settings. For this experiment, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pop it to high just to give it a kind of maximum performance. That's pretty much all there is to setting this device up. So now what I want to do is actually go back through and recognize everything. So I'm going to reset everything up from scratch. And then we're going to go through the entire process of re-indexing and running back through facial recognition just to see if we can compare times and see how long this process takes. I want to do a quick speed test to compare this set, same set of test folders that I did both with and without the Coral unit. And when I first did it, uh, in the first part of this video, when I actually let the device run and actually both create thumbnails as well as recognize all of the facial recognition, um, event locations and all that, the process took over six hours, about six hours and two minutes. When I repeated the process with the Coral TPU, I was able to get it down to four hours which actually doesn't sound like it's all that significant, but it really is because a lot of that time is actually generating the thumbnail itself, the actual, which, which is fixed on both. So if you look at the difference, if we talk about the difference between the actual indexing and the actual recognition, the Coral TPU is significantly faster. Uh, I wasn't able to actually time the difference, um, being able to extract out the indexing as it, because it really happens simultaneously. But I do know that running the processor, doing generating the thumbnails and writing to disk was a significant part of that. So I'm comfortable saying that it's at least twice as fast in the actual process of recognition. Now, depending on the NAS unit you have, you can either use an M.2 version or you can use the USB version, which is the one I'm actually using in this video. But I would say unless you're planning on processing millions of photos and you have a bunch of extra M.2 slots, um, the USB version should be fine. If you do need extra performance, the QNAP will support up to four TPU units on one device, and that's pretty good. And they do parallel process, so the process of recognition can really be sped up quite a bit. Um, unless you're a photographer, unless you do this day in and day out, I don't see that that would be beneficial. But definitely having one TPU is actually really beneficial, especially if you if you're do you take regular pictures and you want to get this uploaded to your NAS and you want to get it recognized, you know, almost real time. Uh, I definitely think it's worth the investment. I'm really happy with it. Again, I wasn't sure what to expect with this. I read the documentation haven't seen a lot of information out on this except for advertising documentation, but I was really impressed with how fast this thing really is. Anyway, that's about it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give it a like, and if you haven't done so, don't forget to subscribe and click the notifications icon so you'll be notified of new content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.